guys, welcome again to ITS Information Technology Skills. On this video, we're going to compute the time complexity of a recurrence relation. So here guys, meron tayo nung function natin name rec and it will accept the variable n na merong data type na in. So inside the function, meron tayong condition. Tapos inside the condition is a for loop na mag start siya ng 0 hanggang dun sa value ni n or less than n. Then, it will increment by 1. So, ang gagawin ng for loop, guys, it will print the value of i. After the loop, it will call again the rec function. And, ang ipapas nyo naman na value ngayon is n minus 1. If we're talking about recurrence function, pag kinompute natin yung time complexity nun, guys, itong function natin na to, we can consider that as t of n. Where t, that is considered as the time, and yung n, guys, that is the number na ipapas natin dun sa function natin. Tapos, meron tayo nung condition na to. So, the time complexity of this condition, pag binilang natin yan independently, each line of code, this will consider as 1. That is the time complexity kasi minsan lang niya babasahin yung condition. Then, here, for the for loop, itong buong for loop na to, the time complexity is n plus 1. Or, we can consider that as n kung tatanggalin natin yung constant number. So, that is one rule in computing the time complexity, we're going to remove all the constant. So, pag tinanggal natin yung constant na 1, ang may iwan na lang dyan is n. So, kung nagtataka kayo guys kung paano na-compute yung n dito sa for loop natin as the time complexity, meron na akong nagawang video about that, which is meron tayong mga examples ng for loop natin na increment by 1, decrement by 1, increment by 2, multiply by 2, and others. So, ilalagay ko na lang sa taas ng screen nyo or sa description box yung link ng video para mapanood nyo kung paano mag-compute ng time complexity ng for loop. So, if the time complexity of this loop is n, consider din natin that the time complexity nung nasa loob ng for loop is n din. So, same lang din sila. Tapos, dito meron tayong call of function. Again, we have the rec minus 1. So, nasabi natin kanina that the call of function which is nandito sa taas, rec int n is the same with t of n. So, basically, may consider natin tong call ng function na to as t of n minus 1 where t is the time and yung ipapasa natin as the value of n. So, yung value of n is n minus 1. Magsasubtract siya ng 1. I-add natin lahat itong mga nandito. t of n is equal to t of n minus 1. Tapos, meron tayong dalawang n that is 2n plus 1. Yun po yung equations na kailangan natin para makompute yung time complexity. So, ngayon guys, para mas masimplify natin, pa-follow din natin yung rule ta sa time complexity which is we're going to remove the constant. So, tatanggalin na lang natin yung constant dito sa labas. We have the 2 as the constant and 1 as the constant. So, yun, nagtataka kayo, bakit ito hindi siya natanggal? E, constant siya. Guys, kailangan po natin yan because that is the time for the call of function. So, hindi po natin makakonsider to as constant kasi pabago-bago yan later on. Okay, pag sinabi natin constant, hindi nagbabago yung value which is yung 2 at saka yung 1 sa labas. So, pag tinanggal natin yung constant, ang maiiwan na lang is t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus n. Ngayon guys, analyze natin if the value of n is 0. Let's say n is 0. So, 0 pinas natin dito. 0 greater than 0, that is false. Kapag false po siya guys, pwede natin sabihin that if the value of n is 0, the time complexity is 1. So, 1 lang siya guys, kasi hindi na siya mag -run. Wala siyang gagawin kapag 0 yung value. False agad dito sa condition. But, if n is greater than 0, ang gagamitin natin is yung na-compute natin kanina where t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus n. Pero, hindi pa natin alam kung ano yung time complexity. Ngayon, using the tree method, kung hindi nyo pala alam yung tree method din guys, na-discuss ko na rin yun sa unang video natin, which is ilalagay ko ulit sa screen nyo or sa description box yung link para alam nyo kung ano yung tree method. Here, let's say the value of n is 3. 3 is greater than 0. Ngayon, for the first call, sa unang call niya, this part, Ang ipapasa niya na value ni n is 3. 3 greater than 0, that is true. Pupunta siya ngayon dito sa loop. So, ang gagawin ni loop, guys, it will print the value of i, which start with 0, hanggang less than n. So, it will print 0, 1, 2. Mag-stop na siya dyan. Kasi, hindi na niya abutin yung value ni n. Okay, so, after printing, 
Sabi, meron ulit siyang call ng condition, which is rec n minus 1. Yung n natin, that is 3. So, ang ipapas niya ngayon na volume ni n is rec 2. So, babalik siya ngayon dito sa taas. And as again, the condition, 2 greater than 0, that is true. It will be the value of i, which is start with 0, less than n. So, 0, 1. Then, after that, it will call again the function n minus 1. So, yung n natin ngayon, guys, is 2. 2 minus 1, that is, rec 1 ngayon ang papasa dun sa taas. So, as the condition, 1 greater than 0, that is true. Print again, or pupunta ulit siya dito sa loop. Meron siyang print na 0. Hindi na siya abot ng 1. After that, it will call again the function, rec 0. So, 1 minus 1, so 0 na ipapas niya. Babalik siya dito sa taas. As again, the condition, if the... Condition is false, wala siyang gagawin. So, 0 greater than 0, that is false. Wala na siyang gagawin. mag stop na yung function natin or the recurrence relation. Ngayon guys, if we're going to analyze using the tree method, ilang beses siya nag-call ng function. Meron siyang call ng function na 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then, pansin ninyo yung n, that is 3. Yung call ng function is 4. So, pwede natin sabihin na n plus 1. Pag 8 yung n, ang call ng function is 9. Tapos, tignan natin dun sa print. So, nasabi natin kanina na yung for loop natin, the time complexity is n. So, tignan nga natin kung same siya dun sa number of print. So, yung number of print niya, 1, 2, 3. Same dun sa n. Dito naman, 1, 2. Same dun sa n. Dito naman, 1. Same dun sa n. 0, wala siyang printin. That is the same. Using yung na-analyze natin kanina, balikan lang natin, if n is 0, the time complexity is 1. If n is greater than 0, that is, let's say, 3, gagamitin natin yung equation na to. Let's say, mag-call tayo ng function ulit, rec n. Ibig sabihin, mag-print siya ng value ng i, which is, that is equal to n din, yung na-analyze natin kanina. Then, it will call again the function, pero ngayon, n minus 1, so, yung n-1 natin yan, kapag nag-print siya, tulad nung 2 kanina, so, ang ipiprint niya ngayon is n-1 din. Mababawasan din yung ipiprint niya na number ni i. So, it call again the function. Ngayon naman is n-2. but po 2 dito, eh dito 1. Imagine that guys. Pag dito sa taas, mag-minus ka ng 1, naging 2 siya. But hindi natin alam yung value ni n. So, Pag, pang ilang step ba yung pagmaminusan mo? So, first step, second step, another minus. That's so, mag-minus 2 na lang tayo dyan. Kasi hindi natin alam kung ilan yung value ni n. If n minus 2 ang naipasa dun sa rec function natin, ang print ng i is n minus 2. And so on. So, basically, kailan magtatapos yung pag-call ng function? Pansin nyo kanina, nung umabot siya ng 0. So, kailan naabot ng 0 yung value or yung ipapas natin dun sa loob ng function? Kapag, if the value of n is equal to n. Kung mapapansin nyo, let's say, 3 dito, nag-1 ka, nag-2 ka, tapos pag nag-3 ka, so, 3 minus 3, magiging 0 na po yung output. So, ibig sabihin, pag nag-0 na yung pass mo dun sa function mo, wala na siyang gagawing action. So, pwede natin sabihin na rec n minus n. Mga so, guys, using the 3 method, ang titingnan lang natin dito is kung ilang beses niya kinol yung function, yung sarili niya. Pag hindi natin alam yung value ni n, tulad ng sabi ko kanina, if the value of n is 8, ang call ng function niya is 9. So, pwede natin sabihin that the call of function is equal to n plus 1. The next, meron tayo nung print. Ilang beses siya nag-print. Balikan natin tong example natin kanina for the printing. Kung yung n natin is 3, ilang beses siya nag-print? 1, 2, 3. Kung yung n natin is 2, ilang beses siya nag-print? 1, 2. Kung yung n natin is 1, ilang beses siya nag-print? 1. Then, observe, kapag nag-call siya dito, merong printing dito. Pag nag-call siya dyan, meron printing din dyan. Pag nag-call siya dito, may printing din. So, ilang beses ulit? 1, 2, 3. 3 times din bumalik sa for loop. 
So, pwede natin sabihin that the printing is equal to n times n. Okay? So, yan dito, may call ka dito, another n. May call ka dito, another n. May call ka dito, another n. Pero siguro naisip nyo, meron naman 1, meron namang 2 dito. Kung tatanggalin ulit natin yung constant, we have yung 1 tapos 2. That is considered as n din. So, pwede natin sabihin that n times siyang bumalik sa for loop. And n times din siyang magpiprint ng value ni i. So, ngayon guys, pag minultiply natin tong n times n, pwede natin sabihin that that is also equal to n e square. Okay? So, yung print natin, n e square na lang, consider natin dyan. Ngayon, i-compute natin yung time complexity. Meron tayo ngayong n e square plus n plus 1. So, yan pa yung na-compute natin. Now, using the rule of time complexity, we're going to get the highest ordered term. Ngayon, ang pinakamataas dito sa mga nandito, n square n plus 1 is the n square. So, we can say that the time complexity of this recurrence relation is big O of n square or big theta of n square. So, ngayon naman guys, same algorithm pa rin tayo, pero ang gagamitin naman natin to compute the time complexity is the substitution method. So, balikan natin yung equation na nakuha natin kanina is t of n equals to t of n minus 1 plus n. So, using substitution method, sa substitute natin yung value ng t of n minus 1 plus n. Pero, hindi natin alam kung ano yung value ni t of n minus 1. Ang alam lang natin, guys, is the value of t of n. Yung value ni t of n is ito po. So, ngayon, guys, if we're going to analyze itong equation na na-compute natin, we can have this t of n that is minus 0. Kasi kung nag-minus kayo ng 0 sa number or any number, equal pa rin siya sa number na yun. So, pwede natin sabihin na yung t of n is the same with t of n minus 0. Pwede din naman natin sabihin yung t of n minus 1 plus n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus n minus 0. So, mag-minus lang din tayo dito ng 0. So, kung isipin natin kung yung t of n minus 1, meron tayong minus 1 dyan, pwede natin sabihin na that is equal to t of n minus 2 plus n minus 1. That is basic understanding in mathematics. Kasi kung makikita nyo, mag increment yung 0, naging 1 siya. So, mag increment din tong 1 dito, magiging 2 siya. Yung 0 dito, magiging 1 naman dito sa gulo. So, lalagay na lang natin siya muna dito. Now, we are ready with substitution. Kasi meron na tayong value ni t of n minus 1. So, ang value ni t of n minus 1 is t of n minus 2 plus n minus 1. Then, meron tayo nitong plus n. Okay? So, if we're going to add this, magkakaroon tayo ng answer na t of n minus 2 plus 2n minus 1. So, para naging 2n, meron tayong 1, 2, dalawang n. That is 2n minus 1. Then, what if magkaroon pa tayo ng another recursion? So, let's say, magkakol pa rin ulit siya ng sarili niya. So, magkakol siya dito, pero hindi natin alam yung value ni t of n minus 2. So, using the same understanding dito sa, nandito sa left, pwede natin sabihin that the value of t of n minus 2 is t of n minus 3 plus n minus 2. Kung mapapansin nyo, nag-increment na siya dito, minus 0, ito, nag minus 1, tapos nag minus 2. Same dito, minus 1, naging minus 2, minus 3. Nag-increment lang yung mga numbers. Okay? So, now we have the value of t of n minus 2. Kung isa-substitute natin siya, the value of t of n minus 2 is t of n minus 3 plus n minus 2. Then, meron tayo nung 2n minus 1. So, add lang natin siya. So, kapag pinag-add natin itong mga equations natin na to, magkakaroon tayo ng sagot na t of n minus 2 plus 3n minus 2. So, what if meron pa ulit tayong another recursion? So, magpapatuloy yan hanggang kailan matatapos yung recursion natin. If the value of p of n minus another number is equal to 0. Kapag maging 0 na po yung nandito sa loob ni parenthesis. So, kailan siya magiging 0? Let's say, itong 1, 2, and 3 natin, those are constant numbers na nag update every now and then. So, sabihin natin that is variable k. If the value of k is equal to 
n. So, magkakaroon tayo ng equation na t of n minus n. So, n minus n, magiging 0 na siya. Plus, so kung titignan natin dito sa taas, mayroon tayong 1 times n. So, 1 times n, that is n. Tapos, meron tayong 2n. Tapos, meron tayong 3n. So, nag update din yung mga numbers sa before ni n. So, pwede natin yung sabihin na n times n. Tapos, meron tayong update din sa dulo. Meron tayo ditong 0, 1, 2, tapos naging 3. So, mag minus n din tayo, guys. So, nasabi kanina, if the time is a 0, 0 na yung nasa loob ni parentheses, wala na siyang gagawin. So, pwede natin siyang i-cancel out. Tapos, meron tayong n times n, that is n is square minus n. So, using the rule kay time complexity, we're going to get the highest order term of the equation. So, ang pinakamataas dito is the n is square. So, pwede nating masabi using substitution method that the time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n is square or big theta of n square. So, that's it guys. We are done with the examples of relational equations. Tapos, kung paano natin siya kinampute using the three method and substitution method. Kung nagustuhan tong video na to, don't forget to like and of course, subscribe for more tutorial videos. Bye!